Alright, in this video I'm going to show you how to get the best results when denoising in Blender and how to fix the flickering in your animations. So Blender has a few different denoising options. It's got single layer denoising, multi-layer denoising and temporal denoising. You may see add-ons which have different names for the denoisers but it's using the same methods just with a different interface. So let's get started. All right, so we're in our Blender file now. Um, this is just a quick scene I've set up to compare the differences between a single and a multi-layer. I've got quite a big light with a volume. I've also got a glossy paint and a glossy floor. And as well as that, I've added in a dust particle system just to show you the difference. Now on a single layer, it tends to get a bit smudged with small particles like this, but you'll be able to see the difference yourself. Now, single layer denoising, you're probably all familiar with. It's here on the right side you'll see render and then denoise and you can select an albedo and a normal. You can also come over here into compositing, shift A, denoise and first you'll have to tick use nodes and from here you can connect the image. Now to use the normal and albedo you actually need to enable denoising data over here on the render passes. So if we click this we can see it comes up. So we can connect the normal and the albedo. And that's basically it for single layer denoising. You'll just have to add a file output. Now, if you're still getting some blotchiness and it's sort of smudging all your details, you'll probably need multi-layer denoising. Multi-layer denoising is essentially splitting every single pass that creates the image into a separate element and then denoising them individually and bringing them back together. It's actually a lot simpler than it sounds and I'll show you how to do that now. So first we need to disable our denoise node so I'll delete that and then we need to come over here to the render passes and start introducing all our passes that we're going to denoise so we need to get the diffuse we need to get the glossy the transmission volume and then any others that we want to denoise I normally do the emission environment and ambient occlusion and as well as this even though I'm not denoising them I normally like taking these passes like the Z depth the mist position, normal, vector, and UV. If I render the image now, I can show you all of these different outputs. So I'll just render that quickly. So now the render's rendered, I can control shift and view my render. So if I go through all these, you'll be able to see the different elements that make up our image. So starting off with our diffuse direct, diffuse indirect, diffuse color, gloss direct, gloss indirect, gloss color, translucency, translucency, translucency color, volume direct, volume indirect, emission, environment, and AO. And immediately you can already see that some of these are really noisy. So the glossy indirect normally is very noisy. And this is normally what creates the flickering the most in an animation. So what we're gonna do now is within a multi-layer denoise, we're gonna denoise every single one of these separately and then bring them back together. Now a single layer denoise is just denoising everything as a whole and that's why it gets quite smudgy and blotchy looking. A multi-layer should solve that but you still need to give it quite a few samples. So how we're going to denoise our multi-layer is I'm going to delete these views and I'm going to add 14 denoise nodes. So I'm going to shift A denoise and I'm just going to collapse it and I'm just going to copy and paste it basically for all of these yellow ones. We don't use this yellow one because this is a combined image. If I view that, it's the whole image. So we don't need that anymore. With all these other yellow ones, we're going to build that image back up using them. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to just shift D, 14 denoise nodes. So now I've got my denoise nodes. I'm going to do exactly what we did with the single layer, but on a multi-layer scale. So I'm going to plug each of these yellow inputs into the top input of our denoise. Just like that. And then I'm going to take the denoising normal and connect that as well. And then the same for the albedo. So now that's done. So now we have each layer separate and we can either render these separately or combine them together in the software. If we rendered them separately, we'd have the ability to edit everything after it's been rendered. 
This would give us the power to change how reflective things are, the colour of the car, or even how foggy it is. And it's one of the most used practices in CGI and VFX. On the other hand, we could combine them all in Blender so that it only renders one image. This would greatly reduce how much control you have in the Blender compositing stage and it is quite slow in general because uh, Blender compositing uses CPU at the moment, not GPU. But here's how you can do both. So the standard principle for combining any render layers in Blender is that the colour needs to be multiplied over its direct and indirect light. So the diffuse direct and the diffuse indirect is going to be multiplied by the diffuse colour. So I'm going to add in a mix colour node and I'm going to set this to multiply and just collapse that. And I'm going to plug the diffuse direct into the top and the diffuse colour into the bottom. Now, if I preview this first node, which is the diffuse direct, we can see there's no color. This is just like the light that's hitting these objects. Now, if I preview the multiply, we can see that the color is actually being multiplied on top. So it's already looking like our image. So from here, I'm just gonna duplicate that, do the indirect into the top, and then the color into the bottom and preview that one. Now this may look a little bit different. Yeah, we can't really see much, but that's because there isn't as much indirect light happening in this scene. So I'm just gonna do that for every single one of these. Now, when we get to our volume, emission, environment, and AO, we don't really need to do that because we're just gonna add them on top. So I'm gonna delete these ones, and then we're gonna start adding our add nodes because now we've We've got these together, but now we need to add them on top. So now I'm going to add in a mix color. Set this to add. And start adding these together. So this one and this one. And if I preview the top one. And then I preview with it all combined. It's just changed having that little bit of indirect. Again for these ones. So if I preview the top one, we can see this is our reflection. And then if we preview the other one, this is our indirect. And now we've got both of them. And then again, for this one. And this is our translucency. So it should be our headlights, which it is. And we're just gonna keep doing that until they're both combined. So it's gonna look something like this. Just make sure to save your file when you're doing this because it, it could get a bit heavy. Now, if I preview this, you can see I've got my color, I've got my glossiness, but I'm missing my volume and my emissions. So now we need to add them on top. So I'm going to duplicate this add node. I'm going to do it a few times and I'm going to plug that one into the top and then start plugging in our other ones here. So I'll plug in our direct. I'm going to plug in, we don't necessarily need the volume indirect on this shot, but I'm going to add it anyway. So I'm going to plug that into the bottom. So we have no environment, so we don't really need to plug that in. So I'll just plug in this emission. And also I'm not really going to use the AO, so I'm not going to use that either. So now if we view our node, we can see we've got our emission and we've got our mist back. And that's how you set up a multi-layer denoise. So now let's show you how to use our separate render layers, combine them all together, and then we'll compare our single layer denoise and our multi-layer denoise. Now I'm going to use a compositing software called Nuke. Uh, there is a free version, but it does have some limitations. There are other versions like Blender that we just used. There's DaVinci Resolve. It has a fusion section, which you can composite in. And also After Effects is known to be quite good. So let's jump into that. All right, before we get started in Nuke, uh, I just need to show you how you can actually save out these multi-layers as a, a multi-layer EXR. So you would have seen before that I had a file output already ready. And this essentially is what I've created. So it's just a file output like this, but I've renamed all of my elements so that they work with my script in Nuke. If you are a Nuke user, you can copy all of these names and, and I can copy my Nuke script. I want to pull it in the description. And if you just put that into your Nuke, you'll be able to be on your way with the script that I use. But essentially, it's just about matching all of our inputs in 
and making sure that we've got a file format set as a multi-layer EXR. And this means that it's only one file that contains all of these instead of loads of different files for each one of these. So it's a lot simpler. So I'm going to get started by plugging in my diffuse and the rest of them. So now I've got all my yellow ones added, I can start adding my other ones. And these other ones will allow me to make changes in the compositing phase. So for example, this Z depth, this will allow me to actually change the depth of field of my image after I've rendered it. And this means that you don't do depth of field in the render. And as well as that, in Newt, you can actually add like lens kernels so that you can get nice bokeh effects. So all of these elements really add to the compositing. So now with all that added, the next time I render, it will go into this work file and it will render a single file which contains all of these. So now we can jump into Nuke and I'll show you how this works. So now we're in Nuke, I can show you that I've got one single file and if I go into the shuffle node which basically tells me what's in this uh, sort of input, I can see that it's got all of my different layers which is quite good. And immediately you can see that gloss indirect that was so noisy before is looking so much better with the multi-layer denoising. So essentially my workflow is the exact same like in Blender. So I have a script here called Blender Loader 2.0. I can plug that in there and I'll just delete these other things and it will come straight back out and look the exact same like so. So there we go, it looks the exact same. And this is essentially what I did in Blender. So I've got my diffuse and I've got my color multiplied over the direct and indirect light. And the same for everything else. And what I was talking about being able to change things on the fly after render is that, for example, if I look at this volume, I can brighten this or even change the color of it. And then if I look back at my final render, that's actually changed the fog without changing anything else. So if you were trying to change the fog just in post-production in Photoshop or something like that, it would be way more difficult. So that really allows creativity with this multi-layer workflow. Now, obviously we're here to see the denoising. So let's compare our single layer and our multi-layer denoising. So now we can compare. So let's just zoom in. And I just want you to look here. So this is the multi-layer denoise. This is the single layer. And this is the exact same samples, the exact same render time. And yet the difference is pretty crazy. So it doesn't have that blotchiness or sort of smudginess that it does in the single layer, which I find really cool. And as well as that, I was talking about how these small elements are probably gonna get lost in the single layer because it's just gonna blur everything as a whole. And just look at this. This is the single layer, this is the multi-layer, and all of them dust particles are showing up way more in the multi-layer compared to the single layer. This may not show in the YouTube compression, but the difference is almost crazy. Again over here, just so much more detail that's being shown. So I definitely recommend using multi-layer denoising like at all times if you can. Now the final denoise method is used in animations only pretty much. It's when Blender uses a different sample method for each frame of an animation, which basically makes the animations look flickery. Now, one way we fix this is to crank the samples really high, but then again, we don't want long render times. So the method of temporal denoising is basically forcing Blender to use an average sample method for each frame so that it all looks similar. Now Blender has obviously this temporal denoising, However, I use an alternative, which is a node inside Nuke, which does it for me after the render is already done. There are other programs as well, such as Topaz Denoise, Neat Denoise, and I think DaVinci Resolve has one as well. But if you're looking for the Blender one, I'm gonna leave two videos which discuss it in great detail below, um, if you want to use that. But I'll be showing you how I do the Nuke denoising. All right, so we're back in Nuke and I've got a video animation open of the exact same scene just to show you what I mean by this flickering. So if I press play, you can see just here on the ground, although this is rendered at 1200 samples 
and this is with multi-layer denoising, it's got flickering happening all over because the different denoise methods that it's using for each frame makes it look different essentially. Now, if I come out of that and you can see I've got my file here and I've got my preview, I can add a node which basically does this temporal denoising. So this is one that I found on Nukepedia. Now, obviously, if you don't know Nuke, you might not get this. So I recommend watching the two videos that I linked down below. But essentially, I got this from Nukepedia, which is an online form where people make custom scripts and nodes that you can use in your Nuke files. So this one here is essentially one that blends the noise from each frame into a larger portion of the video. So instead of rendering one frame at one denoise pattern, this one is doing a blend of like five frames at once so that it looks a little bit more seamless. So I'm just going to set this to one because I, I really don't need much. And then I'm going to preview that. And immediately you can see that flickering has just vanished. Now I haven't rendered anything again. This is just the node doing its work. But now I have a much smoother, clean image that I can use for my renders. And that is pretty much it. The best ways to denoise in Blender is definitely a multi-layer setup. And if you want to edit things after the fact, then use a compositing software. And if you don't, just combine them all together in Blender. So hopefully you enjoyed that video and learned something. If you did, drop a subscribe and a like. And if you have any problems, leave a comment. Uh, in next video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this image in the LA underpass, which has a full 3D uh, built scene. Um, so I'll show you that in next week's video. Cheers.